You know, it reminds me, I don't know if anyone has seen the pictures of how the Flatiron uh, building, or if you look at New York, the Fifth Avenue area, in a very short space of time, it went through massive transformation. There's pictures mm -hmm. of it in the 1900s where there's these, uh, you know, horse carriages and, and just people. And, you know, within a decade or two, it's full with cars. And that, can you imagine living through that time, that transformation? That, that was one would say the most radical transformation and, and the most extreme sort of before after picture you can think of. Are we about to see that happen again? You talked about, you know, autonomous vehicles, for example, and how smart cities are going to change. Is, is that happening in China already? Is there a massive change? And is it about to happen here too? Or you think, you think we're, like, we're just like decades behind? That's a good point. You know, I, I think I think it's already happening in China. I mean, imagine, right? Imagine, uh, you know, three years ago, three years ago, 36 months ago, everybody used credit cards and cash. 36 months later, nobody has a nickel of, money, of Chinese money in their pockets, right? Nobody uses money anymore. Nobody uses credit cards anymore, right? A, a blockchain-based currency is being rolled out right now. Uh, and, and the experimentation externally in Macau and Hong Kong is already starting, right? And so we are looking at the uh, distribution, the elimination of the distribution of paper money by central banks. I mean, this hasn't happened since uh, like the, the Bank Reform Act of 1844 in the UK. 1844 was the last big revolutionary shift in central bank law, right? That's, that's a big deal. And then in terms of the technology, I mean, gosh, you know, I, I, you know, no one can go to China right now. I haven't been to China in two years because you can't get there. But I mean, you know, it, I've been going off and on, you know, since 1992 and, and, and the transformation in China is absolutely, as you know, it's absolutely radical in, in so many different ways. Uh, and the integration of life, it, 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 that makes it so easy. Um, the tickets are given out by, 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 for everything. You honk your horn and it's illegal to honk your horn in certain areas of Shanghai just for noise reduction. And if you honk your horn, the, the, the machine knows whose ho car honked. And so you get a ticket. And by the way, that eliminates like the cronyism of like, well, we're, I'm a government official. I don't get tickets, you know, you know, in America, right? Same thing, right? I'm a cop. You can't give me a ticket yeah. for a cop. I mean, what, what blockchain offers and all this infrastructure offers is um, when you look at the amount of uh, corruption that, that was alleged in China and the crackdown, these things are like ancient relics now. Everything is so accountable and um, trackable. Even when you gave the example of, you know, horning in a car and it being attributed to you. We talked about in an earlier segment, O2O online to offline. Everything is merging and being centralized and tracked. Um, which creates a very interesting type of society. And I, I, I give you that we have a different level of problem in the US with a lot of social unrest. Doesn't seem to, at least I don't read about it, there doesn't seem to be as much crime uh, or social unrest happening. Uh, we may exclude Hong Kong from that for a moment, right? But, you know, in, in China, uh, but it, it, you know, when you have this technology and you have this accountability, I live in San Francisco, it's a nightmare here. There are videos on social media of people walking into a CVS store and just stealing things and not being stopped, right? I saw that. <laughs> right? The guy on the bicycle. What would happen yeah, to you in, in, in Saudi Arabia if that happened? You'd get your hand chopped off. If this happened in China, it wouldn't happen in China. <laughs> I mean, you know, you accidentally walked out of a store and the, the alarm went off, right? Because you gave that example in a different uh, segment. It's just just such a crazy juxtaposition, such a crazy contrast. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And so, so uh, that's right. So, so there's no graffiti. There's no crime. Uh, there's no issues of, uh, you know, I asked my Chinese, I have a lot of, you know, employees all over China and I asked them, are you nervous? Are you, are you, you know, what's going on? And they're like, Paul, what are you talking about? I get a, I get a great deal on everything that I do. The higher my credit score, the better discounts I get. I get discounts on on, oh, on right. everything on, on on rental cars when I'm going on vacation. I get discounts on hotels. So the better my credit score, the better more discounts I get. And you know, so there's a point to me. That, there's a payoff for me cooperating with the social contract in China. I get a sense in America that, the, that there isn't a payoff for cooperation. People think the system is broken, and, and that was the whole, you know, uh, the genesis of, of, of Bitcoin in 2008 was look at all these, you know, oligarchs in New York City are getting bailed out, and everyone got a 10 billion dollar check from the government, and three million people lost their homes. 
that is fundamentally wrong and no one did anything. And by the way, most important of all, nobody on Wall Street was arrested. I was at Lehman Brothers when all that happened. You know, I know one person who should have been arrested who was one of the leaders of my organization, you know, and nobody was arrested, nobody went to jail. And people just said, okay, that's well, fine. If that's the way you want to have it, then we're going to have to go off and find a way to, to, to seek uh, options and to seek systems where I can get a payoff. Wow, and so lovely. that's Bitcoin, right? And so, so, so you right? And so, you know, my my insurance was taken away. My my leave was taken. I have nine siblings. I'm the youngest, and I see all my siblings just they were crippled physically and emotionally because all of their benefits were taken away as laborers, right? They lost it. They they and then when you're when you're too old, they just chuck chuck you out. You you get thrown out. Right when when you're 50, you, you, they don't have a reason for you to, to have you around anymore. And so, so the, the the lax labor laws have caused a lot of problems because people have permanent disability right now, and they, they get injured and they don't get the te- medical attention because they can't afford it. And so they let chronic issues, you know, linger. Uh, people go to alcohol and opioids because they just don't feel like they have a lot of hope, uh, and so forth. And so, so this is what you see, and 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 you don't see this in China right now. People still believe that they get a good deal, and that if they participate in the system, they're going to very likely be better off for, for the most part. Now, that that's starting to gurgle in China, where you have people in, in the West that are just not as well off as you have on the East Coast of China. Um, you know, and, and, and that is, you know, rampant in the UK where the same thing happened, right? All the banks were bailed out. Um, and and you're so, 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 so in China, we just don't have the kind of social unrest because there was not a GFC. That's the critical historical point here. China's banking system didn't fall apart. It might in the future, but it didn't fall apart in 2008. Yeah, G- GFC meaning great financial crisis, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. You know, I think the takeaway for our, our listeners, we have listeners from all types of you know places, VCs, executives, founders, um, get your sort of, you know, we've got Paul here screaming from the rooftops, publishing books. Um, and, you know, I've read the Digital Transformation of Property in Greater China, the book you published. You can get it on Amazon and, you know, um, or f- from your website too, is that right? Um, no, you can get it on Amazon and you can Amazon. get it on the World Scientific website. And it made number one in the real estate section of Amazon. So we're very happy. Exactly. So it's a must read. And, and look, I think the screaming message here is don't believe everything you read in the media media sort of understand there's a lot of bias and really now the tables have turned it's time to look at china in terms of where proptech is going um i agree i'm inspired as a venture capitalist seeing how proptech is taking off and for me the playbook is so different now before it used to be make something work in the us and then create a copycat you know in in latin america and in china etc now it's what are the chinese doing Wow, it's it's being proven out. If you're a prop tech founder, you need to pay attention to what the you know Chinese counterparts are doing because yeah. that is a potential, a very likely scenario for how things may go. Big if if the U.S. gets it right, you know we, we may cripple ourselves with legislation, with with too much regulation, um, and internal strife. But if we can get through that, and I'm a believer in forward progress, as you've said, you know, in, in an earlier segment, you know, the, the U.S. has the ability to sort of sprint and, and get things done. I, I do think this is where PropTech's heading. So, uh, Paul, any concluding remarks before we, um, uh, you know, say goodbye? Yes, uh, I would also say the other place that we that we that came up on our radar that's really interesting is that golden triangle between uh, Cambridge, Oxford, and GCHQ in the uh, west of England. Okay, yeah. A lot of good stuff with AI prop tech going on. Another place to go uh, look at, go digging for um, digging for gold. Uh, a lot of good, a lot of interesting companies popping up there. And Oxford publishes some great, you know, reports around the prop tech segment. There's, a, there's an old report I've seen that really summarizes and sort of how I learned about prop tech. And, you know, you as a researcher, too, um, it, it's it's I agree. It, it's interesting. Well, well, thank you so much for coming on today's uh, program. Uh, it was a great pleasure having you. Oh, it's, I love talking to you. It's fascinating and great, great questions and really enjoyed it.